Christy J with Stitch in Heaven and welcome back to Schoolhouse Dash. Um, we've had so much fun during this so long. I hope you have too. We're on the home stretch. Today we're gonna start we're gonna release a very classic block. It's called the Bear Paw. Okay, so make sure you download your instructions and get ready to sew because this is going to be a very very fun week. The bear paw actually goes right here on the sides of the quilt. So you should have two of them. You should make two of them this week um, and we're going to use those very beautiful blue fabrics this week. So I hope you have a great time. Enjoy. Don't forget to your homework. If you will post your finished blocks in the albums, we love seeing those blocks. And remember, we're giving away prizes as well. We'll be sure to notify you if you'll hit the bell on the bottom of this video. We'll be sure to notify you when we post another video. So have a great week and here's Mitzi. All right, next up on the list of these beautiful blocks for our schoolhouse dash quilt is gonna be the bear's paw. Great traditional quilt, loved by many quilters. And it looks a little intimidating, but as long as you take your time with it, it's good. You've got, you'll be able to get exactly through it because what we're doing with the bear's paw is no different than we've done with any of the other blocks. Now our Island Batik fabrics we were using in this one, which are always beautiful. We've got the bluebird, my icicle, the ocean I love. And just to confirm, yep, it's pool. pool. Some of them are close in color, so I just want to make sure I got the right color for you. But the pool is here in our lighter one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the steps to make the bear paw. You're going to have two of these that go into the quilt. The other one is going to be right up here as well. And once you get one section down, one, one quarter of that paw, then it's easy to get the rest of them. It's, it really is repeating the same pattern over and over and over to get the four different sections. And then we'll add in what's like sashing basically and that center point to it. So let's get started on that. Now your first step is going to be working again on a half square triangle, something we've done plenty of times with the other blocks. So you're going to take one of the ocean and one of the icicle. And I'm going to draw my line on the icicle because it's going to show up better with my pen. I use the Air Erase pens from Sew Line, and this one is perfect for my little creative grids from Stitch in Heaven. And so I'm just going to use that ruler to come across and draw my diagonal line. I've done this plenty of times before already. Okay, so I've got my diagonal line on there. Again, this is an Air Erase pen, so it's going to go ahead and be gone in a little bit anyway, but we're going to trim that down anyway. I'm going to put it right here on top of my ocean, just like we've done with plenty other blocks. And again, I'm going to stitch a quarter inch seam on each side of that diagonal line. So now I've already done a bunch of these up ahead of time to get you through the block. But if I hadn't, you could literally just draw all these off the ones you need, line them up and start chain piecing them through really easy. And it really is a time saver to do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and go on the other side as well. Again, sticking with that quarter inch seam. And I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut straight down that line that I drew. Because now those two pieces become my half square triangles. Slide this out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and give them a press. Now I am gonna go ahead and press these to my ocean. It's such a darker color compared to my icicle, so I wanna go ahead and press towards those. Just put a little heat on them at first to kind of set those threads and that seam and I'll give it a little bit of pressure there. I can certainly use steam if I want on this. Um, the thing I want you to remember when you're working with these really small pieces is that if you use the steam, you want to be really careful that you were just pressing. You're not ironing on it. You're not, you know, pushing through. And the reason being is because it's really easy to distort these little small pieces. So like right now I'm using just a dry iron. Okay. Got my pieces here. Next up, as I've done before, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the little dog ears because we definitely don't need that for the bulk. So I'm going to take those off. Now for each paw section, you're going to need four of these. There are the icicle and the ocean and the half square triangles. Okay, so let me bring my board up here and put my ruler and my marking pen aside. Now I'm going to bring in next, what I'm working with is my bluebird. That's my square and that's going to be the portion here. So I'm going to make one section like this. 
Now here's where it's going to be important to really watch your direction and watch your placement. And that's why I like using my Martelli mat is because I can lay everything out ahead of time. I can see exactly what I'm working with and I make sure my placement is correct before I ever start stitching it together. So I'm gonna work one paw at a time. And what we're looking at, and what can get confusing and get turned a lot of times, trust me, ask how I know, is we want all of what would be the little bear claws heading in the correct direction outward. Now we're gonna have a solid piece and solid square of the icicle, so I know that's gonna go up on my corner. And what I'm looking for is to make sure those little bear claws are heading the right direction. And they are not gonna be always looking the same way when you start rotating around. But once you make one, you're, you're good to go. So you can see I've kind of just laid that out there to make sure my pieces are the direction I wanna go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew these three together first, then I'm gonna sew these two, and then I'm gonna attach these here, and I'll show you how that's done. I found that's the easiest way to put this particular block together. So let me go ahead and do that first. So there's one. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my solid and go ahead and put that onto that little cloth part. So we're working with a lot smaller pieces this time than some of our other blocks have been, but it's using the exact same techniques that we've used all along. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do these two pieces together here. So I'm just gonna put one around top of the other, making sure my claws are still pointing in the correct direction, and stitch in that quarter inch seam. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide that slightly out of the way and I'm gonna go ahead and press these. Now I'm gonna to press towards the solid on this one. Um, even though, yes, I do have that ocean back there, I'm gonna go that direction because when it comes time to put these all together with nesting them, it's just gonna be an easier route to go. So I'm still, I'm just using a dry iron on this time. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good press from both sides. I'll put my pressure on it. Now when I'm putting the pressure like this, I certainly don't wanna move my iron. I don't wanna stretch my fabric in any way. Make sure it's all staying awake. This one I can press either direction with it. Um, I'm just gonna to press towards this more solid. See, my iron's telling me it's awake. It knows I'm gonna want steam in a little bit, just not yet. So I'm just gonna give that press right there and all I'm doing is making sure that seam allowance is just gonna lay right on over. Okay. So from here, I'm gonna just line myself back up again, make sure everything is pointing in the correct direction, and it is. So I'm gonna take this smaller piece here that's got the two, two claws, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it onto my solid piece. We'll think of that solid piece as the paw. So I'm just gonna line it up. Go ahead and stitch in at that quarter inch. And when you're working with little pieces like this, this is where it's really important to have a good quarter inch. Whether you have it marked on the bed of your machine or using a quarter inch foot to fit your machine. I prefer having the, uh, the proper foot for my machine. It's just always been my pick. I'm going to press this towards my paw, my solid piece. I'm going to give it a good press right there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and put my claw on top, the rest of my claws. So again, I'm now at that section. So let's go ahead and line that up. And because I chose to press toward the more solid piece, what that's gonna do is it allows me to nest those seams right up against each other. And that way, again, we're helping to just reduce the bulk down. So I'm gonna put a pin in that, hold it nice and tight, stretch that out to make sure it's the right length. Everything is good. Let's go ahead and put the seam in. I'm of course going to slow down when I get to my pin so I can get my pin out of the way. I definitely don't want to run over it. Okay. And then, now because I've got more of a solid fabric here, I'm actually going to go ahead and, and press that direction. It's just strictly for helping to reduce the bulk. This is what I'm working towards. And now, once we've got this pressed, we have a full a uh, piece of that quarter, uh, a quarter of that bear paw. So we've got a nice section in there. I'm just gonna give this a good amount of heat in there to make sure I'm really nice and flat. Okay. 
Now I've gone ahead and prepped my other three to go with this block so that they are ready to go. And what I can start doing then is just laying these out because these are going to be the corners of that block. So just going out each direction. Now next up I do have my ocean, my little square of ocean that's going to go right in the center. So I'm just going to lay this out, just do a rough layout. And then with my pool is my brighter sashing style areas. I'm just going to go ahead and stick those in there as well because I want to make sure I've got everything laid out just like it needs to be. And this is going to go together really quick once we're at this stage. So I'm just going to lay those out. So I definitely like my layout. Everything looks good. It's where it's supposed to be. So what I'm going to do is treat this like it is rows. So I've got paw, sash paw, and then do my centers and then do the same thing. And that way it makes it go a lot faster to get these together. And then I'm going to go ahead and do, put my pool in here first. Now normally I would go ahead and press, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and put this next paw on because I'm going to press once I'm all done with the rows before they fully go together. So these are smaller pieces coming all together. I'm just going to go ahead and stitch those in. Now you do have a lot of small pieces coming in together. So just make sure you're lining up nicely. So that's going to get that section done. From here, I'm going to go ahead and do my center. Just line that up. Small little piece of ocean in there just to help accent that whole set of bear paws. Okay, and one more piece coming in with the pool. Again, the pool and the ocean are coming together. Okay, and then my last part is, so that puts that together, and then my last part would be the bottom with the last two paws. So what I'm looking for is just lining it up nice and even. Take one more stitch on that, there we go. And of course you want to make sure you're always going to have it lined up to where your paws are going the correct direction. It would be terrible to switch it and have it go in one direction when they're not supposed to. Again, ask me how I know. It happens. If it does, that's what the seam rippers are for. It's easy to take out these, these long seams. A lot easier to do those than it is to take out the little individual claws. So we'll get that piece in. Great. All right, now let me show you how I'm going to do unpressing with this one because what's going to be my easiest option with the paws is to press to, um, to the pool on this. And then, so I'm going to take, just kind of stand by the idea of every time I'm going to press each of these rows, I'm going to press to the pool, which is that little sashing area. Okay. So there's one. Same way I'm going to do this very carefully with my little center because again we're not working very big pieces and I'm just going to slide my iron easily up into there and give them both a good press. My iron is wide enough I can get them both at the same time. I'm just going to flip and get from the other side as well. And then same idea on what would be the top row is go ahead and put that in pressing for the pool. And just lay that down. Okay. All right, let's lay these out together to make sure everything is lined up well. Your top and your bottom are the same, so it, you, you, they can go either option. Whether you, if you pressed them one direction, it's all the same. So there we go. So look at those beautiful island batiks coming in, all the colors. I love the way they all come together, especially the dark and the light. So let's put these rows together. Because I chose to press to the pool, um, it's going to allow me to nest these seams right up against each other and so that, that way they're not in the way. I'm going to grab a couple pins here and what I'm doing is I'm going into the seams 
And then I'm gonna put one, because we've got some long strips here, I'm gonna go ahead and put one on each side, about midway between that center point and the ends, just to help hold it together a little bit more. Don't necessarily need to, it should come together just fine. But if you feel like you ever need to add an extra pin in there, that's perfectly fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, one more on this section. All right, so we're pinned up, ready to go. Go ahead and put in with my quarter inch seam. Always remember with these, you're doing a quarter inch seam all the way with everything. I'm gonna slow down, make sure I do not travel over the top of my needles or my pins. All the way down. There we go. Now I am gonna go ahead and press that. And again, I'm gonna press to the pool. Cause it's just gonna help keep it easy and more consistent as we're going along. Go ahead and I've got enough heat there. I can kind of give it a little hand press before I bring my iron back. Just get started laying the right way. I'm gonna give it a little bit of steam, not a lot. Just gonna put a little bit in there just to encourage that to lay down and stay down nicely. Last piece is going on. Doing the exact same thing I did with the first one. We're gonna nest those seams right up together there in the center. Put those pins in. Like I said, I like on this one in particular because we've got so many different little seams and all, I, I don't mind putting an extra pin or two in there just to hold everybody together. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Okay, everybody's in. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my corners and my ends are lined up. And away we go. Make sure I pull those pins out. And slow your machine down. If you need to stop to pull them, that's perfectly fine too. I'm just stopping real quick. I wanna make sure my end pieces here are lined up nicely so it stays lined up the whole way, the rest of the way out. Exactly where I want it. Go ahead and cut my threads. Again, I'm gonna press to my pool. Flip this over just to make it a little bit easier to lay it. Give it a little bit of steam there. Doesn't take a whole lot. These Lar Star irons give a lot of steam, so you can get just a quick little burst to help to get those all pressed in. Just make sure everything is nice and solid and straight. And you have a bear's paw. So see, well, it looked a little intimidating with all those little tiny pieces. It's not that bad. It's easy to get through. You just gotta take your time, make sure everything is lined up. But you now have your bear paw. You've got two of these to make to go into the quilt. And they're gonna, again, gonna go on our side pieces. There's one here and one up there. And easy to go. Just put your colors together. Those beautiful blues of the island boutiques go together magically in there to make those bear paws. And it's ready to go. So stay tuned. We got just a couple more to go.